be not. Until I have shown thy strength yes. unto this generation. I believe every believer has some work he has to finish before he dies. Amen. Amen. And I want to finish what I'm supposed to do. Yes, sir. Before I leave. So y'all, y'all pray with me. Yes, sir. That the will of God be done in my life. Amen. Pastor Callahan's some of the last words that he spoke to me. Uh, he had had the second stroke and Monday morning he had driven to the prayer tower and we were trying to figure out how in the world he get to the prayer tower. He couldn't hardly stand up all off. And that was the first time that I could understand him plainly in his talking. Now, the last time I could understand him plainly in his talking. He talked for a few minutes and then he turned around and looked me right in my face. He said, Jones, no matter what you do, and make sure you obey the voice of the Lord. And he talked for a few more minutes and came back to me again. The ran and said, John, no matter what you do, you make sure you obey the voice of the Lord. A little bit more, he came back the third time. Once again, John, no matter what you do, you make sure you obey the voice. Obey the voice of the Lord ain't gonna be happy with everybody. Yeah. To obey the voice of the Lord, you got to go against the grain. Sometime, but I ain't supposed to be walking now. Uh, but you're not so you, you, when, when you go against me, everybody ain't gonna be happy. Yeah. I wrote it down somewhere in my notes. It, it's our success is in our obedience. Yeah. Not because you're a pastor. Yeah. Not because you're some apostle or bishop or have some big title. Yeah. But for everyone who's as believers, our success is in our obedience. Yeah. And our obedience is not between me and you. Yeah. Our obedience is between me and God. Yeah. Your faith is obedience. When you obey what God says, that sends a signal that you trust Him. Yes, Once upon a time, Pastor Kelly and myself was talking, I was waiting for God to work the thing out for me. And I told him, I said, Man, I ain't believe in God like you believe in God. I got a faith like you got. Something like that. He said, Jones, don't you do what God tells you? I said, yeah. He said, you got faith. Amen. Don't, don't, don't make your faith on whether you got healed or not when somebody laid hands on you. Amen. True faith is when you do what God tells you. Amen. It's real faith. Abraham did what God said. He obeyed the voice. It was counted him as righteousness because he did what God said. Give me James. So this new lesson came from here. I'm going to try to sit down a little bit longer, y'all. I got here, but boy, y'all got my son live out the bus. I have a heart attack on that. Let me say that. Y'all, y'all, y'all pray for me for real. Now, I'm going to tell y'all about me. I'm an old soldier. Amen. Y'all hear me? I'm one of them guys who, you know, you know, broke his arm and I, I, he's still trying to bite you, scratch you, so. Amen. I got, if I got breath in, I got fight in I wish I had this never been. I'm old school. You're not old school. I'm on the bottom and saying I'm a hoopie. Amen. <laughs> I got some old school. Oh, they got some of their guns now. They don't know what old school is. They just, just shoot them up. <laughs> but James, James, in the Sunday school lesson is talking about uh, hearing and obeying um, the voice of the, the Lord. And for all of us, our success is in our obedience to God's word. And James, who is the half-brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and um, he considered himself uh, a half-brother, but he's a, he, he, he came to believe in his brother lately. They believed in him in the beginning. Father, in the words of my mouth, and imagine my heart being suffering in that sight. God's strength, I redeem in Jesus' name. Amen. James didn't start out 
meeting his brother. John, I think that's seven by five, don't turn just right there. It speaks of how James did not believe uh, in Jesus. We should read it, I think it's um, Luke 18, around 24, it talks about a prophet uh, not being without honor. And I like the way that uh, Mark 6 and 4 says it best because it speaks of his own family. And man is not without honor, say those that are closest, closer uh, to him. So James, James became a believer uh, later. There's several accounts of James in the scripture. But James decided to do some writing. And I love what he wrote. And you need to read the whole book of James. This is it's just good. Um, but I want to pick these couple of verses out. Um, and that's verse 22 to 22. Where he's admonishing us to obey um, the word of God. All of us ought to obey God's word. Read. But be ye doers of the word. It was doers, doers. One thing to come to church. One thing to type. But that ain't doing. A, 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 a doer is to, to hearken to that that I hear. When I come and I hear the word and, and, and the word of God is like a mirror. Nobody in this church knows anything about you, what you're going through, and the preacher can hit on it. Not only does he hit on it to identify you and where you are, but also will identify you for your correction. For you to get it. God don't just want to label where you are. Really, God, God wants to do more than get you. God needs you to repent. So James writing is saying that, that to, to come to church, to be faithful in church, you can be in church every time the door opens. You're not going to be blessed until you obey uh, what God says. Jesus, on one occasion, with his 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 teaching, his mother and brother, they were without him. They, 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 they came to church late. And, and somebody was telling Jesus that your mother and your brother are without. And Jesus took time out to say, Here's your mother and your brother, those who hear and do, or hear and keep uh, the word of God. Commentary called that the true family. The true family of God. See, you, you're a real brother or sister when you obey word. When you follow and do what words say, when you do what words say, that makes you a true believer. Yeah. But if you're not doing what the words say, you're not a true believer. Yeah. I get it at John in a minute about that fellowship, but give me John 8. Oh, y'all pray for me, because what I'm going to try to do is finish in a good time. Oh, uh, yeah. Y'all better give me a seat, though, so. <laughs> John 8 31 says Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him Those who, who believed on him If ye continue in my words See, see John Excuse me John is, is, is talking about continuing In what brought you here yes, We are doing nothing to get saved And stop being obedient yeah. Romans 10 9 that quick You'll do Romans 10.9 and that cause you to feel a little trembling and got your little trembling spoken in your little tongues. Now you done quit continuing what brought you. Yeah. This word brought you. Give me uh, Romans 10.8. But what say it? What say it? The word is not even. The word is not even. Even in thy mouth. In thy mouth. And in thy heart. And in thy heart. That is. That is. The word of faith. The word of faith. Which we preach. Which we preach. That if thou shalt come with thy mouth, if you and I will confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart, yes, that God hath raised him from the dead, yes, thou shalt be saved. All right, now that word brought you here, yeah. but now you got to continue in the word to stay here. Yeah. Romans 8 31 again, you see, you done confess your sins, you done ran around the church, you done told your testimony, we done bumped heads, we done, we done had a ball. Now you walk out there, go find your girlfriend. See, Virgil 
Junior will jump you. Virgil Senior will tell you what you need to do. The other folks had a saying at, at Cross Temple. He called Elder Reed. Elder Reed knew how to jump you. He said, but I got to tell y'all about it. I'm saying. See, even a, even a sound system man. He said, I ain't nothing but the devil. Hey, what you done? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, uh -huh. if we continue in my word, if you, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. See, see, coming is one thing, continuing is another. Yeah. And it, 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 uh, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. The way that we can pick up what we think, you should obey. And what you shouldn't know that. Yeah. We come to church like we have one of them, I don't want to call them by the name, one of them buffets. And you only pick out that is good for you. But God told Ezekiel, you got to eat the whole roll. Yeah. In, 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 in your mouth, it's going to be sweet or bitter. When they get in your belly, I wish you had some so if, if you eat this word, it'll give you a like, BM. Don't, don't run out the church when I finish. BM mean Bible movement. You eat this word, I promise you, something will change uh, on the inside. But to hear the word and not obey the word, it doesn't help us. We must obey that that we hear. 8, 31 again. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, Yeah. If ye continue in my word, Yes. Then are ye my disciples indeed. Now, now listen, now, this will come against some people's doctrine. Yeah. 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 Amen. Now, you make sure you read all the Bible when you get hooked up on doctrine. Make sure you read the verses that don't agree with what they say to you. Amen. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. But any doctrine that permits you to sin, there's something wrong with it. Any doctrine Amen. that permits you to sin, something wrong with it. Amen. The Hebrew writer in 6 about 6, he said, when me and you sin, we crucify Jesus afresh. Yeah. Something wrong with you sinning. But you, she got to be saved. Yeah. You just guilty of having that hammer and beating that nail in Jesus' hand. Yeah. 6 6, what the Hebrew 6 6? If they shall fall away, uh -huh. to renew them again unto repentance, uh -huh. seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh. So when you so when you sin and you crucify Jesus all over again, yeah. He died for that sin you in, and you keep living in it. Yeah. I better sit down. God gives you an eye power over all the forces of the enemy. That gives us the ability. We have the ability through the Holy Ghost to keep His word, yeah. not just hear His word. The Holy Ghost is a keeper. Yeah. Jews say, "Now I'm in this able yeah. to keep you." That, that word giving you Jew twenty-four. He's able. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from the The Holy Ghost is in Virgil County, Virgil Captain John C. Yeah. Is able to keep you from falling. God that you receive is able to keep you from messing up. In Ezekiel 18, they said that God was not equal because he punished them with the sin. And God said, I'm not my ways equal. When God give you the power, when God give you the power to resist the devil, then God got the right to judge.
knew her meaning they came together. If you, you, got to, you got to have intercourse with the truth. Oh, wait. 
got some people married and ain't getting none. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. It's already out. Well, you married and you a nun. That good? That good? The man, you say, I can't have no peace unless I drink my beer. You just justified your beer. And the more you justify, the more you're going to stay in it. You justify your sin, you're going to stay in it. And I don't, I, don't, I don't mean this as a, as a block, but let me tell you this flat time. Because there is a thing going around the church world that if I get married, that's going to solve all my problems. I want you to find somebody that's married, that's smiling, but they ain't happy. You got some people smiling and they ain't happy. They had a movie on the night and the question was, why did I get married? And there's several folk in the church say, Rev, if I wasn't saying next to my companion, I'd say amen. But since I'm saying next to I got the hole, uh, you better know what the hole is. Because when you're tight, that's a sacrifice. Yeah. But it's also your obedience. Yeah. 
So, so don't, don't read that to me and think God means you ain't going to give. That ain't what that means. But we'll, we'll, we'll sin on God and want our good works outweigh our bad works. That don't work like that. Saul to save the best calf, to save the best livestock. He gonna try to bless, he gonna try to go around with God say by making a sacrifice that to him was a credible sacrifice. But Samuel said, God don't want that. God wants your obedience above anything else you can do. God is a spirit. He understands obedience. Help me here. Stuff. God don't need stuff. God speaks stuff. God could have put more in hand on the sheep he wanted. God don't need you for no sheep. He needs your obedience. When you don't obey God, it puts God in handcuffs. You know, there's a football game coming up Friday night. And your baby messed up during the week. And you, his mama and daddy, was going to let your baby go to the football game. But because your baby messed up, that baby put you in handcuffs. Now, when you would have told the baby he can go, now Jimmy can't go. But now the baby not going puts more pressure on you because you got to sit there and watch it. Yeah. <laughs> see, 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 you, you put handcuffs on God when you don't obey his word. You, <laughs> it's stuff God want to do for you. God want to bless you, but God can't bless you like he want to bless you because you want to obey him. Somebody put those hands together, you gotta pray. 